children with special needs in the same way that they're uh, catering for students in the mainstream. They're actually hiring an additional 450 teachers at primary level and at secondary level. This is something um, which has been improved much over the last number of years. And for the government to come at this point in time and actually target their savings in the education budget on those students who have the highest level of need is simply unacceptable. And what we're calling on the government deputies tonight to do is to come out and show their, their dissatisfaction with that and do what is fair to ensure that children who need these resources actually get them in September. How much would it cost and where would you propose the money should come from? It would cost about, we would need about 450 additional resource teachers in order to ensure there's no cuts for children in September, which would cost about 24 million euro. And it would also cost a similar amount of level to ensure that the level of special needs assistance which are required are in place as well. Um, in our Fianna Fáil Education Pre-Budget Submission, we ensured that the, the state, that the budget allocation for education was protected, so that we wouldn't actually have to see any cuts in education. Alternatively, the Minister for Education actually introduced 90 million euro worth of, of, uh, of cuts to the education budget, and we're seeing the impact of that now with, with these cuts in September targeted to children with special needs. We've also seen in the last few days the government talk about whether or not they'll be introducing tax cuts in, uh, in, in the next budget. I think parents across the country uh, whose, children are, whose children are facing a 12% cut in the resource hours in September will find it very difficult to see the government talking about introducing tax cuts when their children are getting cut in the teaching hours. But in terms of uh, finding that extra 48 million euro in September, uh, where, would you, where would you take it from? Well, there was the government um, had 20 million targeted or taken out of the system for maternity leave changes. Um, which, and I think that they should put that towards it. But I also think the government should, um, we've seen them talk about the fact that they're going to take a billion off, uh, and talking about taking a billion off the savings required next year. I think they should find the money from that, and instead of talking about introducing tax cuts before they do that, ensure that the money is provided in order to ensure the students, each and every of the 42,500 students with a special need, doesn't suffer a 12% tax cut in September. But that's 2014, and eh? we're talking about September 2013. Yeah, when we think it's well within the government's capacity to find that money in order to do that. We've seen leeway come in the last while in relation to various deals we've done in relation to the deficit there, which means there's less pressure on the budget now. The government cut 90 million from education. It's that 90 million cut which is leading to the, 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 the services for special needs being reduced. And we think, first of all, we wouldn't have introduced that 90 million, which would have meant um, there, would, there, would, there would be 90 million more in the education budget. And secondly, we think whenever the government are finding some leeway now in the national finances, that should be targeted towards special needs uh, children first before they start talking about tax cuts or any other measures. Charlie, on the issue of the Anglo tapes, you're a first time Fianna Fáil deputy. Do you think, given what we've heard in recent days, that the previous administration was correct to introduce the bank guarantee in September 2008? Well, I think what's clear from what we've seen in the last number of days is the fact that we need a very thorough investigation of exactly what happened and of what the last government was told. I think uh, that's absolutely crucial in order to be able to understand the decision that was made. I think the last government introduced the bank guarantee and almost every, every other, almost most of the parties at that time supported it. And since then, those that didn't support it have actually voted to extend it and indeed to pay the debts that actually weren't covered by the bank guarantee itself. So I find it very, I find it uh, hard to believe that we see the Tanishka today and the Minister for Finance indicate that uh, they weren't aware these tapes existed. And uh, I think the, the public, and I find that credulous, I think the, the public will find that a bit incredulous as well. And I think what we're seeing and the evidence that's coming out from it just proves the point that we need a thorough and wide examination of what exactly happened in that, at that time and what led to that very momentous decision, which had big implications for the country. Was your party duped into that decision? Well, I think that's what needs to be found out. Um, certainly you would be left with, uh, with very serious, very, very serious questions as a result of the evidence that's been played in some of the tapes which have been played in national media in the last while and uh, uncovered uh, quite serious, um, uh, serious uh, happenings within the bank and, and, and a very serious views or uh, culture in terms of the, the management there. So I think that's, that's, that, that just leads to the fact that we need a very thorough investigation and that investigation needs to be not just of the night the decision was made because I don't think you can get a proper assessment of that without thoroughly examining what went before it and what was going on within the banks at the highest level. Do you understand that some people find it a bit sickening to be called getting out about these tapes because it's been followed by instrumentals in everything that went on in the economic crisis? No, I think what I mean, I, I think it's welcome the fact that those tapes are out there. Uh, I pointed out that 
I'm exceptionally surprised that the government were not aware of the fact those kits were there. I think they're crucial to actually examining what happened at the time. Um, I think, and as I pointed out, it wasn't just the last government. Most of the parties at the time actually voted for it, uh, or indeed subsequently. And what they were told at that time, and uh, what, what the banks and whether the legitimacy of the information they were given to the banks is crucial to that. And uh, I think it just uh, it, it emphasises the need for uh, a thorough examination of the lead up to that matter. So, just again, do you think anybody in government or the central bank or the financial regulator would take at face value of what a bank was telling them, particularly the angle without checking? I no, I think people would have needed to check it. Um, but if uh, the banks were saying one thing and the, the, the central bank was backing that up. I think it would have left the government in the day in a very, a very difficult position. And uh, I think, uh, I mean, the decisions were made at that time in, in, a, in a time of, uh, of of real emergency had very real implications for what happened afterwards. I think, as a point that we have seen, we, we saw that most in the political system either voted for it then or voted for it subsequently. And uh, what's surprising is that we haven't at this stage actually gone back to uh, assess the merits of what, the, what was said in that night and to see if what was said was accurate. And uh, I think what, what we've seen over the last couple of days with these kids coming out uh, brings that to the fore more so. And uh, I think that the, the public will very rightly demand that there's a very proper, a very thorough investigation into exactly what went on. So, Charlie, what you're saying is that you'd have to wait for a banking inquiry to finish its work before you could say that it was the correct decision to introduce the bank guarantee? No, I, I'm not saying that. I, I, but I, what I'm saying is, I mean, people have very different views on whether the bank guarantee was the correct thing to do or not. What's your view? Um, my, my view is I, I can't be sure in hindsight. Mm. I think it's a very, very difficult question to answer. Um, and uh, what we, so what we, and, I, mean, I think that we know that it had very serious implications for the country. What would have happened if it hadn't been put in place? People can't be sure of either. But I think what we need to know is whether the government were duped and uh, were duped by being given false information at the time. These tips would certainly raise very serious questions in relation to that. I think what we need to see is the government come out with a very comprehensive inquiry that actually uh, assesses not these tips, which they seem to know nothing about until yesterday, but also the wider questions and issues as to what was going on within the banks at that time. All right, thanks everyone.